You ever been to a party and found that one person who just seems to command all the attention in the room, yet when they talk to you, they make you feel like the most special person in the whole world? That is charisma. And for the people who are good at it, it's almost like a superpower. It opens up more opportunities for them, it makes more people want to say yes to their requests, and it just makes people want to hang out with them more. But how do you improve your charisma? Is it something you're born with or is it something that you can learn? Well, according to behavioral science, it turns out it is something that you can learn, practice, and there are techniques that you can use to make your charisma better. So that's what I'm gonna go through in today's video. In this episode of Persuasive, the series where I teach you all the tricks from behavioral science to get more people to say yes to you, we're going to be going through six tips on how to improve your charisma based on research in behavioral science. Let's get started. All right, so tips one to four are actually about how to be a better listener because oftentimes we think of charisma as like being really smooth with your words and really talkative. And I couldn't help but notice you look a lot like my next girlfriend. But actually the most charismatic people are charismatic because they make you feel like you're the most important person in the room when they talk to you. You hear about people's interactions with charismatic people giving this kind of anecdote all the time. People used to say this about Bill Clinton a lot, for example, that whenever Bill Clinton would talk to you, he'd make you feel like you were the only person in the room. So how do you create that effect with the people that you're talking to to make them feel special and therefore make you come across as more charismatic? Well, here are some tips. Okay, so tip number one is eye contact. This is like really basic, but it makes a lot of sense psychologically. Because our visual system is the most dominant of all the senses in the brain, we've learned that where people are looking is often what is the most important thing to that person's environment. If they're looking straight at you, that means they think that you are the most important person in that very moment. So don't waste this very natural cue that we all have to show that you're listening to the person that you're talking to. Look them in the eyes. That's going to tell them that you're paying attention to them and what they're saying. Now, obviously you can take this too far, Oh, you don't want to just be staring people down, but making a concerted effort to look at them in the eyes more often and not just around the room is really going to improve that interaction. Okay, tip number two is equally simple and that is to use that person's name more often. In psychology, we know that people pay very special attention to hearing their own name. This is called the cocktail party effect and it's called that because imagine you're at this cocktail party where there's lots of background noise and you're not really paying attention to any of it until somebody says your name and immediately your attention is redirected to whoever just said your name in that room. Our brains have a remarkable capacity for listening for our name because it's quite likely that if somebody's mentioning our name, they're saying something that's directly relevant to us. And so in the same way, if you're trying to make someone feel like you're listening to them, use their name more often because that shows where your attention is. That shows that you're really listening to what they have to say and you really care about them. And as a result of that, they're just gonna feel really special and it's actually quite rewarding for people to hear their name over and over again. Okay, so now you're talking to this person, you're looking them in the eyes, you're using their name more often, but what do you actually say to them? Well, one thing that you should be trying to do is ask really interesting questions that get them to talk more about the most interesting aspects of their own life. It's very easy for us, and I struggle with this all the time, it's very easy for us to just talk about ourselves rather than talk about the person with talking to. We love talking about ourselves, but so does the person you're talking to. So try and get them to talk about themselves so that they can have that experience, that positive experience, and therefore pass all of those positive emotions onto you. What's interesting about the psychological research into this is that talking about yourself actually releases dopamine, the same reward hormone that gets released whenever you do anything else rewarding, like eating chocolate or winning the lottery or doing something else that's pretty fun. In fact, people enjoy talking about themselves so much that according to research in behavioral economics, people are willing to forego actual tangible money in order to talk about themselves rather than somebody else. So when you're trying to come across as charismatic to that person you're talking to, ask them questions about themselves, get them to talk about the most interesting parts about their own lives and that's going to make you come across as more charismatic as a result. But what if you can't think of any interesting questions to ask? Well, here's where this next tip comes in and this one is another super simple one. It's just repeat people's words back to them. I know, that's like so basic. You don't even have to think about what to say, you just say what they just said to you back to them. But actually, this technique is really powerful because it takes advantage of something in psychology called the echo effect. So the echo effect is this phenomenon in psychology that if somebody says your words back to you, that's actually rewarding for your brain. It's releasing dopamine in the same way that dopamine is released when you talk about yourself, but also it presents to the other person that you're on the same page as them, you're listening to them, you've really heard what they just told you because you've said the exact same words back to them. And as a result of that, people are more likely to feel like this is a strong social interaction that we're really on the same page here, we're really vibing in the right way. And 
all you've done really is just repeat their own words back to them and yet they have all of these positive associations as a result. So that's tip number four, take advantage of the echo effect, repeat people's words back to them. Okay, let's move on to tip numbers five and six. Okay, so tip number five is called gush, don't gossip. And what I mean by this is that if you're going to talk about other people, try and be as positive as possible rather than bringing them down. <laughs> You're breathtaking. This is important because of something in psychology called, and warning, scientific term alert, it's called spontaneous trait transfer. The, the what? Okay, 50% of the people watching this video just dropped off because that was way too technical a word. But for the people who are still watching this video, let me tell you what spontaneous trait transfer is. Spontaneous trait transfer is this weird phenomenon that if you talk bad about somebody else, then those bad traits get passed on to you as well as the person you're talking about. So if you say, oh my goodness, Alicia is like so arrogant and cocky and like loud, then according to spontaneous trait transfer, they're going to associate those negative characteristics with Alicia, but they're also going to associate those negative characteristics with you as well. So instead, try and talk about the positives of people. Say, Alicia has such a good sense of humor, she's like really funny, also she has a great fashion sense, which I really appreciate about her. This kind of positivity is going to be a lot more enjoyable to listen to, and also spontaneous trait transfer is going to be working in your favor by associating those positive characteristics with you rather than negative ones. So while you might find it fun to ridicule other people, instead try and be positive, bring people up rather than down, and it's gonna do you a lot of favors. And tip number six is just don't try too hard to be perfect. This is taking advantage of something called the pratfall effect. The pratfall effect in psychology says that we actually trust things that are slightly imperfect more than things that are supposedly perfect or pretending to be perfect. One of my favorite examples of this is Jennifer Lawrence at the Oscars when she fell over on the stairs while going to do her speech. Falling over at a big event like this on live television is incredibly embarrassing, but rather than people making fun of her as a result of it, instead she was like heralded as being like this super down-to-earth celebrity that even though she's this big Hollywood star, that she's really relatable as a result of that. That is one of the best examples of how the pratfall effect can make you more charismatic. If you lean into your vulnerabilities, admit when you have flaws, you actually come across as a more relatable person, more likable, more honest, and as a result of that, you'll come across as more charismatic. So those are my five tips for you today, guys, but of course, take all of these with the caveat that too much is also bad. Too much eye contact is weird. Saying people's name too much is also weird. Talking about your own flaws all the time means that you're not then talking about the other person, which means that you're sort of, you know, negating point three by doing too much of point six. So guys, with all of these things, it's obviously about balance, but hopefully this video gave you some ideas about how you can try and work on your own charisma. I know that personally, I'm not the most naturally charismatic person in public, and these are skills that I'm thinking about and working on all the time, but I've definitely found this kind of advice, this kind of research from behavioral science to be extremely useful in improving my own charisma. So hopefully it'll help you too. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, could you please give me a thumbs up down below? Subscribe if you haven't already. Like I said, we're rapidly approaching 10,000 subscribers. And when we get there, we're gonna do this crazy video when I'm gonna try and explain every single cognitive bias. There are like 300 cognitive biases or something. And if I can't explain any of them, well, there's gonna be some pretty fun punishments. So if you wanna see that video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.